Okay, we got a 2015 Prius C. It's a new customer purchase. This car is actually from the Rust Belt, so it's interesting. We're here in California. We're not used to seeing so much rust on a relatively new car. Pretty low miles, 130,000. Uh, the issue it's here for is brake, traction control, ABS, uh, you know, numerous dash lights on. So we'll go ahead and scan with the tech stream. One other clue we have is that it apparently has evidence that the front left wheel was replaced. So in chatting on what it could be, you know, there's one theory is it might need an ABS sensor in the front left, like maybe the tire blew out and shredded the wire, which we've seen before. Won't really know for sure until we scan it. So let's get on to tech stream time. So as per usual, we're gonna to go to health check. That's gonna scan all systems. It'll take about a minute or two to, to go through them all. It is gonna ask me if I wanna to connect to the network and I will answer no. All right, so let's take a look at the ABS codes. All right. Oh, that's interesting. So we actually suspected the left wheel speed sensor was blown because it had a blowout on that side, but it looks like the right is bad. Now we don't know for sure that's the problem, but we're going to investigate there first. I want to look back at some of the other stuff. For example, why is the uh, hybrid control setting a code? And there's a simple explanation for that. The vehicle uses regen to slow down. If it doesn't know the speed of the wheels, it can't effectively slow down and keep track of the wheel speed. So that's a hybrid code. So there's, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with the hybrid system. If you have a dead wheel speed sensor, you're gonna get a hybrid code. One code can cause this avalanche effect. I believe we have a freeze frame because we have the snowflake. So we could actually look at the wheel speeds when it set that code. Three wheels are registering speed. It's going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> and then one wheel stops registering speed, which is the front right and shows zero. It's moving a lot. Well, here's your problem. This is the ABS wheel speed sensor wire and it's tied in a knot. It's hanging around in here. So I believe that this went up. So it is going down to the hub. So that part may be fine. Oh look, here's a piece of a tire. So there was a blowout on this side and the shreds of the tire got wrapped on the half shaft. So probably the tire blew out and kind of exploded and snagged this and just yanked it off. So we just gotta find the other side of that plug. I think it should be up in here. I'm gonna get a flashlight. Okay, I found the plug and it's yanked out of the plastic housing. So we might be able to actually fix this without buying any parts, it's possible. All right, so here's our plug that was up in the fender well and uh, this wire was originally going into this plug. Here's an interesting question. Does it matter which way these go? Like, is there a polarity to this? My understanding is it does not when you have a two wire ABS sensor that they're the, you know, doesn't matter which one goes where. So we're gonna try and disassemble this plug. We're gonna try and get the pins out of this in order to, um, you know, be able to reinsert these wires. So we'll take this over to the bench and try and pull the pins out of this plug. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut some plastic off of the back side of the plug to just get access to those terminals and be able to solder onto them. This is all to save a few bucks. We could, you know, just buy a new part, but this is pretty easy. So I'm going to just kind of gently saw through uh, to expose the bare metal terminals, and then we'll go ahead and put some heat shrink on to make it uh, insulated and waterproof after this is done. Chop the plastic out of the way and expose these uh, metal pins. So we'll get this uh, plastic out of here and we'll do uh, some careful soldering and heat shrinking and plug this puppy back in. All right, I looked up this part and uh, from the image of the part, I can tell that from top view of the plug, the white, white wire goes on the right side and the black wire goes on the left side. I'm going to actually use three pieces of heat shrink. I'm going to go one around the whole thing and then two smaller ones over each individual wire. There's one. That looks good. I'll push the heat shrink down over that guy. And just got to get the other one. Let's see if I can just kind of, you got some solder on both sides. There. There's the other one. You can get that heat shrink under there. All right. So I'll just shrink down the heat shrink and plug it back in. All right, we're going to plug this back in and we should be good to go. I can't really see the plug very well, so I'm just going to feel around in here and, and click these guys together. Now I'll just uh, go ahead and secure this cable so it doesn't get caught in the wheel again. The clips are all broken, so I'll just zip tie it back in place. Now some people would say you'd be better off just replacing this whole part. I really enjoy saving a little money by uh, fixing what's there using what I have. This looks really good. I mean, for all intent and purposes, this is just as good as replacing the part. Okay, so we'll clear the code and go for a test drive. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, which is clear all codes, and it's gonna clear all these codes. And I just wanna check that that code doesn't instantly come back. Uh, like meaning that that wire isn't broken somewhere else farther up because it did get tugged pretty hard Okay clear yes All right, we're scanning again The dash lights are all off uh, You know the brake light is on because I have the parking brake on here But uh, all those other lights are off We were able to clear um, several lights. We had the ABS light, the traction control light, the brake light, and we had a hybrid code logged. Between all those things, certainly the dealership would have charged, I'm guessing, $1,000. Uh, they really don't fix wiring at the dealership. Independent shop, you might have gotten away for $500. We were really uh, doing good financially on this. We probably spent less than a dollar. We got some solder and heat shrink into the job. This is a perfect DIY job. Um, in my opinion, this is fixed properly and uh, we won't see another problem from that wheel speed sensor.